This is Dr. Chapar. I'm going to show you how to do a chi-square test using Excel. First, I will do a step-by-step -step calculations uh, as if we are doing by hand. Then I'll use uh, Excel function to do the chi-square test again. Uh, in this example, I have uh, two uh, variables. They are the years of experience and the return in the stock market. Uh, we classify the employees based on their years of experience, one to three years experience four to ten and eleven plus years and we have two types of return those who generate more than four percent over the stock market and less than four percent over the stock market right uh, we have the data regarding the employees and their performances so i knew there are no there are 40 employees who has one to three years of work experience and they generated more than four percent over the stock market and so forth uh, if you look into the chi-square test, we have this formula observed minus expected square and then divided uh, by expected. I'm going to use this formula and for that I need to be first basically uh, generate these fields here in terms of expected values. Right? To remind ourselves, remember our objective is to see if there is uh, any relationship between the years of experience and then the return in the stock market. So our null hypothesis is that years of experience and return in stock market are independent of each other. That means our alternate uh, our alternate hypothesis is that they are actually dependent on each other or there is some kind of a relationship between them. All right. So let me start calculating the expected values. Uh, to calculate the expected values, I'm going to use the averages or ex uh, compared to the total so what I know that there are 55 employees who has one to three years of job, uh, work experience out of 188 right and then if these are truly uh, randomly distributed or there, if there is no relationship between the stock market return and the years of experience then I should observe that out of 140 certain number of them should be in this category so that is what I'm going to do I'm going to say there are 55 and this is basically uh, this tell me like 29.3 of them basically uh, are a one to three per uh, years experience and then I'm going to multiply this with 140 so if that is true that I have 29.3 of employees are in the one to three years ca uh, job experience category then out of 140 I should observe something similar so I'm going to multiply this and that tells me if this was like the ideal world, I would observe 40.957. Right. Similarly, I'm going to do uh, the next one. This time I know that uh, there are 92 employees out of 188. And these were if they were really randomly or evenly distributed out of those 68.5 would be in the four to ten years experience and finally um, there are 41 out of 188 uh, years experience that's like 21.8 percent of the employees and if they were really uh, randomly or uniformly distributed based on the return i should have observed 30 point um, five three two right now um of course i can do calculate these cells the similar way 55 188 multiplied by 48 and then continue i also know that the total number of employees in the one three years experience bracket is 55 so that means if i subtract it this 40.957 from 55 i'm gonna get the number i'll just do the others I was expecting to see 30 employees, but I ended up seeing 25, right? So let's test this one. And for that, I need to calculate the chi-square values, right? For this formula, I'm gonna calculate this value for each cell, right? So, and then I'm gonna sum them up to come up with the final value, right? The first one is uh, 40 minus this 40.957 
then square that number and then divide by the expected value right, that is 0 0.22 and I can copy to the other cells right, so those are the individual values right so my total chi square is going to be uh, some of these and that is some of these six values and that is equal to 6.421 right now uh, in this example I'm going to check two um, confidence uh, level one with the alpha value of 0.1 and the other one with, with the alpha value of 0 0.025 so let's uh, start doing those right right now the first step is uh, to get the okay let's get the alpha value and I'm saying that is equal to uh, 0 0.1 and I also need to know the degrees of freedom, right? Uh, for the degrees of freedom, uh, degrees of freedom DF is going to be a number of columns mul minus one multiplied by number of rows minus one, right? In this case, I have three categories of age groups, one, two, three, four to 10, 11 plus. So three minus one is two, right? So my degrees of freedom is going to be two times and they, I have two categories of return and that is two minus one, one. So my degrees of freedom is equal to two times one. And actually, let me merge these two cells. Oh, two times one, I'm sorry. All right, so two. Now the next thing is to calculate the uh, or read the chi-square value from the uh, chi-square table this is the table I have a degrees of freedom of 2 and alpha value of 1 that is 4.61 right one and because this calculated uh, chi-square value is greater than this uh, I will reject the null hypothesis that says they are uh, independent and uh, that means I'm gonna say that at 90% confidence interval 1 minus alpha basically these uh, years of experience and the return they generate next looking let's look into the second case I'm gonna call it B uh, my degrees of freedom is still 2 nothing has changed about that okay and then uh, alpha value is this time 0 0.025 right that is basically 2.5 percent right and the x chi square table if i open it i'll see that for 25 the value is equal to 738 This time, because the chi-square value I'm reading is greater than the one I calculated, I cannot or I fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that means the years of experience and the return they generate the, uh, for the advisors are independent of each other. Right. So as the uh, confidence interval change, I might end up with different values. Right. Now, of course, I can try this thing for different uh, confidence interval or alpha values and then decide every time whether I'm going to reject or fail to reject an hypothesis. But there is a better way. So that is basically if I can again. All right. Can I find the probability where chi-square value is greater than 6421 that I calculated such that I will end up basically uh, rejecting or failing to reject based on the value where I am looking at right so let's get that probability and for that I can use 
chi square built in function and uh, I didn't mention but we are doing a right tail test here um, the x value is this 6.421 and degrees of freedom is 2 right so basically this 0 0.043 and so forth uh, tells me that about 4% probability or 0 0.04 uh, I would if my alpha value is greater than this value I will always uh, reject the null hope hypothesis if it is less than this value like this is greater than is like 0.1 is greater than this one so I'm gonna uh, reject the null if it is less than this value like 0 0.025 then I will be failing to reject right so this way I don't really need to do check for every alpha value or confidence interval I know where it is changing from reject to fail to reject right um, this is good so I don't need to do all these steps every time check the table and so forth the other one is uh, I initially calculated these values and then get to this one right is there a better way to right this is this by the way is called p-value right so this is my p-value right and then I can get to the p-value another way as well without actually calculating these right let me do that and for that I need these observations and expected values again so assuming that I calculated the expected value I'm gonna use the chi-square test again right this time test right so actual range these are the observations and then expected range is these numbers here we go so I don't need to do these calculations at all I can just basically go ahead and ask the uh, Excel to give me directly right so that's the another way of getting the p-value again if the alpha value the uh, level of significance is greater than this I'm gonna reject the null hypothesis if it is less than this then I will be failing to reject.